I'm going to take you guys off. Uh, uh, oh, well, we just ruined that. Oh, there was a surprise. All right. Welcome to uh, TV Talk 2.0 reunion. We're still in a, in a quarantine pandemic. Uh, so the only way I get to hang out with my friends is by inviting them and forcing them to come on a show and hang out with me. Uh, as is such, he's only a few years, few years, a few months away from us having to apologize to an all new Mrs. Griffin. It's David Griffin. Hello. What's up, Josh? Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Good to see you, too. And uh, the one, the only, she's Shanasty. It's Sinead Dufresne. Hi, guys. What's up? What's up? What's I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take that Josh McCuga show banner off because I can't see uh, <laughs> you guys. And I, I just don't want anything. There we go, right? All right, so cancel that. All right, no, wait, I don't want that. There we go. All right, perfect. Proof Boom. that we're live, live show. <laughs> live show, guys. Live show. Hey, listen, David, It's I don't have people back here telling me I got to look at cameras. It's just me in my kitchen with a Golf Channel shirt on. Um, Sinead, how's life? What's going on? Oh, not much. You know, quarantine day 4 billion 72. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, everything's the same. I still don't go anywhere. I feel like I am the most paranoid person on the face of the earth. Really? Um, so I am that person who is like lecturing everybody to stay home and wash your hands and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Uh, mostly just because my parents are still here and we see them a lot because they help with Harrison still sure. when we're both working. But I mean, it's kind of like for the first time, work seems to be picking up for both of us. So good. it's like hard, you know, you get used to like not doing anything and then you have to like switch your whole motivation and be like, oh, yeah, I'm an adult. Like I brush my teeth when I wake up and before I go to bed and <laughs> I do these things. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's been fine. Can't complain. I've been drinking so much. It's like, I feel like I'm gonna have the shakes once I go back to work. It's horrible. I I swear, it's like like five thirty every day. I get this like itch. Same. But I, do you know what I mean? I'm like, I, yeah. I, I can't. I can't drink for ten straight night. Mine yeah. totally starts at five thirty too. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't start before that. I'm not having like hard seltzer than like the rosé, or I don't drink rosé. Hard seltzer than the sangria. Than the Coronas. Well, we just fine. we just played a, a, a socially distant, socially responsible round of golf for David Griffin's bachelor party two weeks. Oh my god, that's yep. so cute! How did you guys fun. do that? Well, golf courses are open, so we're just not like hugging each other and like you know. Oh, so you actually went to a golf course? What? Yeah, they're open. Yeah, golf's probably the best sport to play for social distancing. Maybe like besides tennis, you don't really yeah. need to be next to a person. You can always, no. yeah, it's wow. pretty easy. How is it out there? What is what is what does the world look like these days? <laughs> it's 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 still it's still out there. You know, people are are out there surviving as best they can. Uh, it's nice, especially we were up at this area called Lake Arrowhead, uh, which is this beautiful uh, mountain resort town that's 5,000 feet above elevation and I feel like uh, I'm really a pretty cool. So it's a cool area. That's really cool. That's amazing. Yeah. We had a nice it was time. Fun. It was nice. Yeah, that's, that's great. Are you nervous about like getting married during a pandemic? Uh, I mean, it's not too bad. Our venue's outside, which is yeah. great. We have a pretty big outside outdoor area. We're getting married. So social distancing's easy. You right. know, hopefully people aren't too stressed and about it. Um, right now I saw in uh, Makuga, we're we're in the uh, wedding shred right now, so I'm like way below my normal calorie count, trying to get lean. Um, was, probably should eat more. Like you lost weight, David. Dead yeah, dead. yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to get you know, just trying to shed a few pounds, just trying to make sure I look good in the photos, and then of course we'll go on the honeymoon and just blow it all and gain it all. No, hopefully we won't do that. But uh, yeah, no, we're we're doing good over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we just ordered, we ordered the invitation, so that's out of the way. But, that's yeah. amazing. We can't be yeah. how we were at Josh's, just like hammered and just like literally and in each other's faces like hanging on each other we can't do that this time josh is living uh, the dream such a <laughs> uh, i'm gonna have to shred i'm gonna have to start shredding i guess as the officiant i can't be up there with you all lean and me just like hey i can't fit into the suit <laughs> <laughs> you're just like so pissed <laughs> god damn it david um well this is tv talk uh the the, the most fun show and my the favorite thing I've ever done in the internet as far as a, uh, a team building show. Um, and uh, we, we should talk about some TV, I'm guessing. Um, we have a we have an early super chat from Senior Film. I don't do, I watch Better Call Saul. I know David watches Better Call Saul and we just lost Sinead. Oh, there she is. She's back. <laughs> I don't know what I just did. Um, welcome back, y'all. I got a question. What do you think is Kim Wexler's fate in Better Call Saul? Since in my opinion, it's safe to assume she's not in Breaking Bad. I think she disappears. I Same. just think she just yeah. I don't think she dies. I think she just leaves, you know? Yeah. 
Or I don't know. I mean, the way I don't want to spoil too much, but it seems like she might be going Breaking Bad herself, possibly. So, yeah, I, I kind of feel like if anything, maybe she'll surpass Jimmy in a way where she's not expecting and yeah. go off and do her own thing because she's she's getting tough. She's starting she's to toughen up. So, yeah, we'll so see. You've watched, you've watched Breaking Bad, right? Yeah. Me or Sinead? Oh, Sinead, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you, Sinead. He's definitely not asking you that, <laughs> Um, I watched Breaking Bad back in the day, and then I stopped. And then I did, watched a little bit of Bra uh, Better Call Saul for TV talk, and then I also stopped. And Nils is obsessed, but since See? I have, I know have no idea what's going on. I I'm gonna guess that she joins the circus. So. Joins the circus. That's a classic Shinasty uh, Game of Thrones style recap. Um, we got a we got another special super chat from somebody's favorite person. There's Mark Ellis. Whoa. What a beautiful sight. Love these two. And Josh showed up as well. All, all this money better go to the Griffin ceremony. Sinead, I want a friend's rematch. I, listen, Mark, <laughs> Sinead is a – don't. this is the wrong way to say it, but Sinead is a heavyweight boxer when it comes to friends trivia, and Mark is a flyweight who just got in the ring. Sinead's ability in friends trivia is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's but incredible. honestly, Ellis did pretty good. Like there were a couple that he did pretty good. You remember he got like, he was able to name all of the Phoebe songs, which were like the most obscure thing in the entire world and a totally. couple others. And I was really impressed because I, I mean, I know I'm incredible at it only because I <laughs> literally watched it a thousand times. It would make no sense for me not to be good at it because I watch it every day. So yeah. I knew I would be good at it, but I always forget that like, unless it's like somebody who you know is obsessed with friends, when people are just good at trivia, it's super impressive. And I, I honestly think Mark Ellis is pretty good at trivia. He's pretty good, but Sinead, again, this is, it's like, you know, jumping in a pool with an Olympic swimmer. You're, you're that good. It's it, you, I mean, I don't think you've even flustered by most questions. I think you got one or two wrong. Not just like, like we were counting the wrong answers, not the right ones. That's how good Sinead is. Yeah. Well, I'm down for a rematch anytime. That was so much fun. Right on. There's a lot of people that want to get in the ring. Dave, if you had a, a TV show you think you could nail trivia-wise, what do you think it would be? Ooh, I'm pretty good with The Simpsons. I think I could do oh. pretty well with The Simpsons, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's Especially like cool. seasons one through ten, the first ten seasons, I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable on. Yeah. Right yeah. On. Uh -huh. Okay, Simpsons. Huh? Maybe I'll put this together. We got to find you like a reasonable foe for Simpsons trivia. Maybe we should just do British TV Jospardy, and it's just we just ask questions about Poldark and <laughs> what's the Outla Outlander? Oh, and there's a great shows, good quality no, shows. Those any answers? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like those shows are intense. I think I went on the Schmodown one time and didn't even make it past one round. It's, it's intense. Those guys are and girls don't play. They're really serious. I don't know. Well, David loves a good British drama. Apparently, yeah. David was a Crown trailer today or yesterday. There is a season four teaser trailer for The Crown, which is coming out in November that dropped today. It's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to be introducing Princess Diana now. So you get so even if you're not, if you haven't even seen The Crown yet, I mean, I say start from the beginning. But if you just want the Princess Diana stuff, um, definitely check out the season. Okay. Yeah. Who's playing Princess Diana? I oh, should wonder. I forgot her name. <laughs> well, they, you know, they just cast because um, they're doing two more seasons. You know, every two seasons they do a whole different cast. So they just cast yeah. season five and six version of uh, Princess Elizabeth. She's the tall blonde girl. She's going to be in the Tenant movie. She was in the Night Manager, really pretty, like six foot or something. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, it's like Elizabeth Debicki. Something I don't know how to say it, something like that. I don't want to butcher her name, but okay. yeah, it's it, it's it, it's I'm excited for it. She need I feel like the crown might not be your speed. <laughs> uh, I like the crown, actually. It's a bit slow. Quarantine oh. has made me super sophisticated. So right uh, after I get ooh. done watching Real Housewives, then I'm watching, you know, like, um, Nat Geo and um, Whoa. and things like the crown. That's a joke. I don't watch that many stuff, but I promise. <laughs> I have, uh, I watched the crown last season. I actually really liked it. But I also, like, am obsessed with... Um, uh, Olivia Coleman, like absolutely. Oh, God, she's like, so good. One of my favorite human beings on the face of the earth. So it's, I'm like just biased because of that, but you don't need to be biased to, to know that the crown is really good. This is very true. Uh, Hitman Hudson says Anthony Starr got robbed of an Emmy nom for the boys. I don't disagree. But I, think, I think Anthony Starr always got robbed for an Emmy nom, nom not getting nominated for David. Uh, Banshee. I remember. I, it took me a second. I'm like, uh, Banshee. <laughs> Banshee is yeah. the one. Um, okay, see ya. 
Amanda's leaving. Say bye. You can bye, Amanda. Real quick, just say hi to everybody. They say he always wants me to pop my head in when I look like this. <laughs> <laughs> hi guys. Hi. Hi, Mrs. She's the best. Um, yeah. Uh, I, listen, I think that the boys. Did you? You? Sh you definitely watched the boys, right, Janae? That's like right up your alley. Yeah. When did that was a while ago, right? Yeah, season two is coming out here pretty soon, right, Dave? Really? Yeah, September 4th. Yeah, it's cool they're yeah. doing – they're going to drop the first three episodes, and it's going to be week to week, which is oh. different. So it's not going to be the whole binge mode. They get three episodes and then one episode every Friday, I think, until October 5th or something, and then it's done. Okay. Yeah. Um, Michael Getz asked, uh, Josh, do you have a crazy suit picked out for David's wedding yet? Um, I'm working on it. I'm working. I, I go for my fitting in about a month. I go in for a fitting. Yeah, I'm actually getting a suit, um, like a suit I'm gonna buy, not just rent. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'm really excited. I, uh, I'm not gonna. It's not gonna be a crazy suit. It'll be a tastefully done suit with a little bit of Josh Flair. How does that sound? Okay, that sounds good. Well, I was thinking about going for a floral tie. So well, no, it's not gonna be the star. Maybe just like a nice, like a, a nice bow tie with like a you know a pocket square of some sort. You should have, you should come in with like. Um, like little amoebas, like coronavirus viruses, patchwork everywhere. Or I'll do the inside and it'll just be pole dark scenes. I can just get pole dark scenes. That's, That's acceptable. That's acceptable. Face <laughs> on each of your butt cheeks. <laughs> they can't see that. It'll just have when I have to turn around. That's, it. That's why it's really like extra special, you know? Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, Oh, here, look, here comes Ken Knapsack. Five bucks to cover the cost of the energy being generated by David's shirt. <laughs> Aw, I miss Ken. That's the best. We have a just, live afternoon. Just trying to bring a little sunshine into it all, a little tropical feel, you know. <laughs> I knew that you would wear something tropical, so I didn't wear anything tropical. And I knew Sinead was either going to go two pigtails on top, classic <laughs> Sinead, or go the single top knot, which she went single. So I started with it down, but, you know, it's like I get like a – scratch and I got tied up. Boom. Um, we're we, a lot of super chats coming in here. People know David, what's your wedding? What's your wedding song playlist? What's like, what's a no go and what's a go go. Everything's kind of a go. Um, after being with Michelle now for the last, you know, year and a half, I've kind of gotten into country a little bit more. Uh, she's a country fan. Yeah. So it's going to be a little country, not like hardcore country, you know, more like, um, Oh, what's his name? Luke Bryan. Yeah. But who's, who's the, um, Jason the guy Alton. who, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm blanking, but well, yeah. So the country, like it's probably going to be a little bit of uh, uh you know, pool music, you know, some, you know, a little hip hop, a little old school hip hop, a little new school, a little bit of everything. It's going to be a nice mix some eighties, you know, some, maybe some seventies, maybe some temptations. We'll take it back to Motown. My mom's going to be there. You got to yeah. have Motown. Oh, so I was gonna ask if your family's coming. Oh yeah. They are. Yeah, they are. Is yeah. Family's coming. Sing? Sorry. Is your sister going to sing? Yeah, yeah, Kelly's gonna sing. She's gonna do some opera. She's gonna do a little performance. I think when everybody's sitting down. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, real quick, Hitman Hudson thrown in a super chat. So hyped for the Wheel of Time TV show. Thoughts? Listen, I never read the books. I know I it's a huge <clears throat> following. They're talking about this being like the next Game of Thrones. Have you seen anything, Dave? I, I mean, I just know. I think they're out in New Zealand. I believe filming. Um, I, I know it's coming to Amazon. I'm not a Wheel of Time. Uh, Terry Schwartz, who's uh, one of the managers at IGN. I think she's read all the books, okay. uh, so she's our our in-house wheel of wheel of time expert. So I, I've heard good things. I know people are huge uh, Jordan fans. Um, uh, I just I've never checked it out before. I'm not sure. I don't know what to expect. We've been talking about this show since TV talk was actually in front of cameras. Like the three of us yeah. are actually on a desk as people. Um, I know literally nothing about Wheel of Time, but the amount of people that have brought it up to me, I know I'm going to have to at least watch the first few episodes. Yeah, Amazon's not messing around. I mean, we know they're working, they're filming the Lord of the Rings series and they have Wheel of Time. I mean, they're going all in on the fantasy stuff. So I'm, I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I have some shows written down here. Sinead, I feel like if you haven't started watching this show, you need to immediately because it is so up your alley. We just finished it. It just came out on Netflix. It's called Teenage Bounty Hunters. I know. I think I saw the trailer. It looked like absolute horse poop. Sinead, it's the best, one of the best shows I've seen since Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's not a joke. What? Yes. Strong words. 
Amanda and I finished it. And this is, again, a first show in a long time since like the beginning of quarantine where it ended and we were really upset that it was over. Okay. 10 episodes. I, I, don't, I don't know if you saw the trailer before you watched the show, but it is absolutely horrific. Like it's not good. <laughs> the trailer I saw. Because I was like, Teenage Bounty Hunters. But isn't it, is it for teenagers? No. It's it's young adult-ish, right? But it, it definitely has some adult themes. David, have you watched any of it? I haven't, no. Got, okay, so... <laughs> I don't. I never watch the trailer. All I know is that if Amanda's sister tells her to watch something, we have to watch it. I could tell her a, a host of a show that talks about television um, that I any shows I could recommend to her, she'll never listen to me. But if one of her friends or um, or like her sister or her other sister or anybody that isn't me recommends a show to her, we'll watch it. So this teenage right. Bellwether, her sister says, let's watch it. So we start watching it. The opening scene is kind of weird. And then all of a sudden it turns into like the great, it's super funny. There's adult themes. Do you remember, you know, Kadeem Hardison who played Dwayne Wayne on a different world, which was the Cosby show spinoff from back in the day. Do you guys remember that show? Yeah. I, I think remember the show. Way I remember. Before your time. He's in it. Uh, Method Man is in it, plays like this funny bit character. Uh, a lot of actors that you've never seen before, the two lead girls have n have not been in really anything, like one episodes of shows here and there, and they absolutely knock it out of the park. These little, these girls, I'm, I think they're like 20, 21. Sinead, I'm telling you, you would have been perfect in this show, like absolutely perfect in this show. I, I must have missed the call when they call me. Yeah. You know? It's a it's a um, real. All right, I'll check I'll check it out. I swear to God, if it's not good, I'm gonna be really mad. Yeah, it's, you've, got, you've hyped me, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. Sinead, it's awesome. <laughs> um, Christian uh, from Norway. It's I don't think that's 500 American dollars. I think that's 500 Norwegian francs. I was gonna uh, say sending you 500 Nokia cell phones. That's literally <laughs> what I read. <laughs> I've missed you all together on TV Talk. Much love from Norway. Uh, Norway, we got to get there. We should do a live TV Talk in Norway. Everyone's really oh, gosh. Happy. That is fifty five point. That is fifty five dollars and ninety seven cents American. So that's a very generous donation. Even in, yeah, Norway, that's that's a very generous. That's Krone, Norwegian Krone. Norwegian the Kroner. I hope I'm saying that or Krone. Yeah, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I can't talk highly enough of of teenage bounty hunters. I swear, Sinead, I'm not lying to you. I've watched so much crappy TV over this quarantine. Like I've sat through awful television based solely on boredom and writer's block. And finally we got teenage bounty hunters and it is so, so good. All right, I'm excited, I'll check it out. Okay, boom. Um, what else we got here? Oh, I watched, uh, I finally, got through all of Shit's Creek, and I, I, I'm so upset that I didn't watch it sooner. This might be the most heartfelt comedy I've ever watched in my life. That's one of those shows I wish I watched because uh, Michelle's caught up, and I, during the quarantine, she was watching on Netflix catching up, and I was working here at the computer, but you know, like, I could hear her watching it, and I, I found myself laughing, you know, not even really knowing the context of what's going on, but I know people love it so much, and I think she hasn't seen the final season yet, um, but how, how was it, Josh? Like, did, did it wrap up nicely? Did it have a good good ending? I haven't cried at the end of a comedy, I think, since like Family Ties went off the air and I was eight years old. Oh, like, oh. Years. No, it, like a comedy, a comedy, Sinead, like cried in a comedy. I've cried during This Is Us all the time. I didn't cry at the end of Seinfeld. I didn't cry at the end of Friends. <laughs> although that is a very sad ending. Like just because they end on that frame and you're like, <laughs> that was me um, but I cried at the end of Shit's Creek. It is so heartfelt. It's it's the first season of Shit's Creek is by far its worst season, and that's not like in the pantheon of things. That's kind of like you know whatever, but it it crescendos so well, and it's not so much the plot as it is you just fall in love with every single character, not only the main four, but every single ancillary character that's ever been on the show. It's like loving every single person. Sinead, you need to watch this show. I know. I, I think it was like, it's like one of those things where everybody who's anybody was talking about it. And usually when that happens, I don't like watching. If I've already missed out on it from the beginning, I have to like wait because then I just get, I get really annoyed by like trying to catch up to a show that everybody's talking about, you know, all the time. Yeah. 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 No, it's, I mean, cause in our business, cause then it's like, 
if anytime you're talking to coworkers or anything and they're talking about something that you're like so far behind and like the vibe is different for you, it just bugs me so bad because I'm like, I don't, I, I, I don't feel that same way or like these characters, I don't feel about that yet. So I like to be like far removed from something that takes that takes over like pop culture. Because for a minute there, everybody was talking about Shit's Creek, like everybody. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it exploded, but they, after it's all over, they have this really cool behind the scenes, like our documentary about like the making of the show and the final season, all that kind of stuff. And then you cry again. You just fall in love with these people. It's yeah, so I heard it's really, really, really good. Yeah, you would love it. David, that should maybe be like a, I know you have very little time to watch anything else since you're still paid to watch television. I'm like Sinead and I who are just watching TV. <laughs> I lose track of what, because I know during, when we do these shows, you'd be like, hey, what are you watching right now? And I have to think about what I'm watching. One, I have to think about what I'm watching. Two, I have to think about what I can say I'm watching. You know, like, I mean, for instance, like the boys, the, em the embargo doesn't lift. And this is very, you know, uh, inside baseball terms with the embargo, I think lives uh, in a few days. So I can't really talk about what I think about it, but of course, you know, we've had the junkets already and interviews have come out. So of course we're watching it. Like, so it's always a confusing thing. I'm like, what am I watching? Like I'm watching stuff that isn't coming out until November and December. So that's why my brain's all off when it comes to what I'm watching. Like, like I know we're, I'm kind of going down the list here, but like I just finally started getting back into Vikings. Cause I was, I'm about a season and a half behind. Yeah. I'm on season six, part one now season six part two the final season's coming out pretty soon so i've been trying to catch up with vikings so uh, i've been really enjoying that right now Man, i'm so far behind on vikings i mean i still love it but yeah. Nate, i don't know if you saw that as david was talking he had this smile on his face that just said like i'm cooler than all of you i Did literally you i literally was thinking the exact same thing i was like ah oh, our friend david's so cool like literally so cool. literally I've like, already seen these and like, I'm like, I mean, no. I'm, I'm not trying to brag. It's just like, I have to review these things. It's my job. So I'm watching stuff and that's what I have to do. I'm not trying to brag. It's what I have to do. No, it's cool. <laughs> own it. You better own that shit, David. You own it. <laughs> again, another problem. Again, this is not a big deal. This is just my issue with some of the screeners we get because we get them so far in advance, not bragging. Uh, the special effects aren't always finished. So sometimes you'll be watching a scene and all of a sudden it's like this mm -hmm. big green screen in the background and like the ADR kicks in. It's just some rando dude being like, hey, don't go that direction. Like fill in. It's not even the real actor's voices. I'm like, oh, the sound's all cool. off. I mean, you know, yeah. it's kind of cool to see the behind the scenes to see how they're going to work. But yeah. yeah. This <laughs> kind of thing that used to bug me so bad, I could usually forget. I could forgive like a lot of the CGI that hadn't been put in. The thing I could not get over was the sound. It would sound like they're whispering. And I'd be like, yeah so weird because if um like when you are like watching a movie being filmed or whatever they're talking like normally you know they're talking okay. softer than i'm talking right now even when they're like angry they're like i just don't understand but like you can't hear them physically unless you're sitting right next to them and you always forget that like sound is amplified times a billion before the movie is released like that's not how loud they're talking they're no. talking almost inaudibly and that would drive me nuts in the screen <laughs> It was just like room noise, like like, and you could hear people like walking around behind them. It is I don't know I don't know how they expect to send out screeners yeah. and for people. It kind of takes you out of the magic a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of bummer. Amanda and I have noticed one thing. We've got some super chats coming in here uh, that yeah. I want to get to, but uh, Amanda and I have I've noticed one thing in quarantine to an extreme level is that when you're watching the actual show, your volume is down here. And then as soon as the theme song kicks in, all of a sudden it blows the speakers out of your television. <laughs> like, who is sound mixing on this show? Just ma make it all the same. Like, understand explosions and gunshots and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But going from like, hey, Sinead, and then, uh, and then, gah, 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 that's the theme song. Like, what is happening? Stop that. <laughs> is that just me? All right, never mind. <laughs> No, uh, I, I feel like that, like, I became obsessed with podcasts this year, so all I do is listen to podcasts all day, every day, and that's always my biggest issue. I'm always yeah. like, bless your heart, I know you've never done this before, and I know nothing about podcasting, but fix your audio. Fix your, get your shit together, Karen. Like, that's how <laughs> I feel about it, you know? A podcast is legit just audio, so that's their only and thing. You hear them sometimes, like, their, their lips, like, and I'm like, like I can't deal, but I know nothing about making podcasts. So I have no right to judge anybody. And I'm like, thank you for making this podcast that's taken over my life for the past three months. But I don't want to hear your tongue touching your teeth. Uh, hey, some of those sensitive mics really do bring out. Look at David over there being like, 
<laughs> Smacking for no reason. <laughs> movie, movie Monday says, if y'all checked out Star Girl, I thought it was fantastic and very different than the rest of CW shows. I have not watched it. David is giving a nod over there. I, you know what? One of the, now, no hate to the CW shows. You know, I'm a big 100 fan. I've watched them for years. But because of where my title is TV streaming editor, I haven't had to stay glued into the CW world, even though I know some of that stuff's on DC Universe. So, um, I'm a little bit out of touch when it comes to the CW show, so I haven't uh, I haven't seen a CW show in a long time. Sinead, Star Girl. No, I'm I'm kind of right there along with David. I told you last I think the last time we did TV talk, I was rewatching all of like One Tree Hill. Ooh, <laughs> right? I, yeah. That's like the last CW anything I think I've watched. I even stopped watching. I stopped watching Riverdale. Like I kind of dipped out. CW. Yeah, I just Damn. I don't know. Like I just I, too much time passed, and then I was just like. There's just, I don't know, quarantine's tough because I feel like I expected to want to watch so much more TV, but I think I watched a lot of movies and not TV. Like, I think I flip-flopped from, like, my usual and ended up watching a bunch of movies because the, a TV binge when you can't go anywhere is a lot more exhausting, you know? Totally. Like you're binging something on the weekend and then going to work during the week because you find yourself just, like, on the couch for hours and hours and hours, which was great in the beginning of quarantine, but, like, three months in... When you don't oh, have anything to break it up, it like actually starts making you just like really fatigued. Really fatigued, really tired. Like my hips started hurting because I was laying just like on my side for hours at a time. I'm like, oh man, this is brutal. All just yeah. for watching television. Um, the Hitman Hudson said, I've been watching Star Trek DS9, The West Wing, New Girl, and Legend of Korra and want to start Lovecraft Country. What should I watch today? I will always suggest New Girl or West Wing, but I know David should start. Legend of Korra just came out on Netflix, and it's like the number two show on yeah. on Netflix right now. Yeah, Korra, Korra's a great show. I got some sad news that about the uh, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender live action show. The creators that created the original series, animated series, backed out of the live no, action but- adaptation. Yeah, it really sucks. Um, I know a lot of fans were hyped for it because a lot of people hate the M Night Shyamalan version that came out. It was just bad, not good. Uh, didn't feel you know, authentic to, or even honor what the original did. So it's a shame that I, I assume it's because of creative differences that they backed out. And now I don't know who's going to take it over, but they said that whatever version of the new avatar, the last Airbender comes out on Netflix, it's not our version. So that was kind of sad, but sorry, to answer your question, Cora is awesome, but so is Lovecraft County. It's country. so good. country. Sorry. Good. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's really good. Um, I've seen a little bit past the, uh, the first episode and definitely worth checking out. Sorry, I'm not, not bragging again. Just, uh, just say, David, sorry. sorry just, I, I, I'm not trying to drop names here or anything. Sorry. David's <laughs> over there talking about treading for the wedding and then just coming in and here flexing TV muscle. Like, oh, I've seen all of Lovecraft Country, seen season two VFX, Jordan Peele and I just had lunch. No, Jordan they, in my kitchen right now making me feel Hey, like come on over here, Jordan. He's yeah. making lasagna in the back. Guy's amazing. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, I'm, I'm happy you like it because I'm really excited about it. I am. Are you? I, I, yeah, I think I think it's like it's really cool that Jordan Peele's doing the project and just kind of like addressing um, like a very like the what's his face? Why can't I think of what's his first name? What's the first name? Jordan Peele. No, it's never mind. I was trying to think of one of the people on behind the scenes of the show. It's never going to come to me because mm-hmm. I was just reading about it last week because we were watching the trailer and we we're like, holy shit, this looks just incredible. And just to have Jordan Peele attached to something that comes from someone who is so well known to be extremely racist is it's just really ballsy and daring. And I think it's awesome that it's just like, I don't know. I think anything Jordan Peele touches is always more than TV. Like there's always, there's always more to it than just making things to entertain. And I'm just really excited. I think the trailer looks amazing. Even if I knew nothing about um, the author or anything like that. I was saying, that, saying those of you who are supernatural fans, speaking of the CW, this will kind of scratch that itch. It has a little bit of that supernatural element, you know, ghost stories, legends, things like that. It's yeah, it's, it's really entertaining. Don't tell oh. that he's obsessed. How- how scary is it? Like, how scary are we talking? It's it's not like Haunting of Hill House. It's um, it's not it's not like j- ghosts jumping out at you. I mean, yeah, there's some monsters and things like that, but it's not you know trying to like scare you in that way. It's more fantastical, more fantasy, more adventure. There are, there's even some Indiana Jones kind of elements, like going to caves and looking for you know. Just it's more like that than it is a scary show. Okay, oh. well maybe I will. You, you can handle it, Makugu. I think you can handle it. Okay. Uh, just real quick, uh, Christopher Walmoff says, great to see you all together again through an very generous 
Super chat. Thanks, Chris. We like being here. I mean, if we, if we could do this more often, I think we would. But, you know, we, we all have busy lives. I don't know. Um, but and, and there's also like I feel like when we were doing weekly TV talk, it was a lot more news. And then we were kind of just like really just making fun of each other. <laughs> like 40 minutes. Right. <laughs> It was a fun show. It just kind of went with the flow. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Plus, David's so big time now. He can't do this once a week. You can't. No, I'm not. He's got, I'm he's got lunch with Jordan Peele. He's meeting with a woman that's playing Princess Diana in season three and four right. of yeah. uh, the, Crown. the Crown. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Uh, Luke Pilker wants to know if we watch Lovecraft Country yet. So there you go. There was that answer for that. Um, all right. So I guess then I will have to watch Lovecraft Country. Is that what we're saying here? Well, if you watch that, Josh, I see on your list here. I, I need to watch Perry Mason. I hear it's I hear it's solid. I just I missed it. I just didn't get a chance to check it out. Yeah, Perry Mason was good or not good. It was just good. I'm one just episode okay. behind. Okay, so are, you're almost finished with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think? Um, I think it, it. I think it started not great. Yeah, and then it got good, and then it got kind of boring. Totally. And like I said, I didn't watch Sundays, so I'm one episode behind. So I didn't watch Sundays. Um, I I want you to watch it, David, because I think there's some really great things about it. So I'm not going to spoil it. And it's also like an easy to watch. I think it's a, a better show to binge, to be honest with you, because not every episode's <clears> like <throat> it's not like taking you know all of this emotion out of you. So I th actually think you're in a good position because I do think you'll want to watch it straight Bin. through. Yeah. yeah. I think it would have serviced better as that kind of show for me personally, totally. because mm. I just like sometimes an episode would get done and I'd be like, so what even happened? And yeah. I don't want to give any specifics, but I got real over the preacher storyline real fast. And it yeah. just had no, for me, it had no place in the show. I didn't mm. understand. Mm. It could have, it like had a purpose, but didn't need to have a purpose, you know? And the girl who plays the preacher is great, but like, it's just annoying. Orphan and Black. It's Tatiana Maslany. She's Orphan Black. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, what? I like her. Yeah. How did I not make that connection? Yeah. That's, I yeah. think that's how disinterested I was in that. Totally. But every no, time I'm like, on, Nils and I'd be like, ugh. Like, I tell a little, a little side story. Besides, you know, my, my future wife, uh, fiance, Michelle, uh, when I first met Tatiana Maslany, I think it was the one time in my life where I got a little tongue tied. Um, I'd only, I think it was maybe over from black had just come out. It was at Comic-Con and I was in a press room and she, you know, it's a bunch of press and like one or two members of the cast will sit down and we all ask them questions. And she came in and she just looked at me cause I was sitting right next to where she was going to sit. And she just smiled at me. He was really big smile. And it was one of those things where she said something. I think she complimented me like on my shirt. I had some geek type t-shirt on and I couldn't hear what she said. I just kind of smiled and nodded. I probably look like a big idiot because she kind of just looked at me and nodded back and just didn't say anything. I was like, oh my gosh. I made myself look like an idiot. But yeah, she has, I, I thought she was just gorgeous and super talented. And that was the one time, one of the few times in my life where I was just struck. I was in awe. I didn't know what to say. I, I, and I made honestly, a fool of myself. I remember <laughs> you telling us that story. Did I tell that story already? Okay. I remember, well, this was for a while ago, right? Like this. Yeah, yeah. a little while ago. Yeah. And I also remember like, like I do remember you being totally in love with Tatiana Maslany. Like you talked about her a lot, and I think it was right around that time that you said you couldn't respond, and you're like, I didn't even say anything. I just smiled and nodded because she said something. I didn't hear what she said, so I just smiled and nodded. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a very awkward moment with Tatiana Maslany. It was Comic Con, a, a place where the three of us always did pretty well for ourselves. We always had a good time. Um, she was. It was when I was working for Comic Con HQ. And she was coming on to do like this interview on the stage. And I was backstage, like doing my go back and forth, running between cameras, whatever, like, you know, and I see her and, and Amanda and I had just started watching Orphan Black. We had just finished season one and we were obsessed with the show. And I like saw her and I stopped and I was like, oh my God, I was like, I'm <laughs> such a big fan. And I, and I was sweating and I had like American flag pants on. And I was like, can, can I get a picture? And she was like, uh, yeah. And I like, pulled her in so tight because she is tiny she's a tiny human being she's very very small and i think i like hugged her too hard she's like oh okay and i was like oh whoops that's not bad on that i was like my wife and i love you and i didn't say like i loved you i like <laughs> <laughs> um 
So, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think Perry Mason would have been better serviced as maybe six episodes instead of eight or eight. And I think it was eight total. Um, oh, Josh, sorry. Just to bring it full circle. I know this is going off topic, <laughs> but I just think it's funny that remember we went to that uh, Nightfall History Channel press event to bring everything full circle. Yes. We, we meet her. I don't know if they're still together. We meet her then boyfriend, the, the lead actor of Nightfall, who, of course, um, is very yeah. handsome. And then by the end, Josh and I are like, yeah, he's pretty good guy he seems like a pretty cool guy like, we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good guy. dave and i didn't want to be like so like what's tatiana like does she like hang out? would you guys ever want to go out to dinner is this awkward should i not have said that let's get drinks i love you oh crap he's a very nice guy i i, I like a nice guy yeah he like hung out with us all night he didn't he even did. want to talk to anybody else cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah i think he's welsh i think as a welshman oh that's not good that's, that's not good, good. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that again all right uh let's see what else we got oh guys um have you watched dave on fx slash hulu mm -mm. He, he's a rapper guy right so his name is lil dicky he's like a youtube rapper right yeah and the show dave follows him like trying to be this next big rapper i wasn't sold at first like first episode i was like ah this is but the third episode, I was so engrossed in this series. Now, it's not what we do in the shadows. Nothing is what we do in the shadows. I think that's like the best show FX has put out since it's always sunny in Philadelphia, comedy-wise. I mean, the Jackie Daytona episode might be the best episode of TV of the entire year. If you're not watching what we do in the shadows, Sinead, get on it. David, get on it. I, it's I so stopped watching it. I watched like the first, I watched like the first like eight or something, and then I just stopped. You after eight, you stopped? Yeah, what? I not for any reason other than like it was like it was like before quarantine i think yeah right? yeah it was yeah. before quarantine and then i just stopped and i just we never picked it up again you need to watch it's like finish it because I he's in two of it. yeah we loved it i mean like we loved the original movie i was like honestly i was obsessed i thought it was yeah. hilarious um and we really really loved the show we used to laugh our asses off every time there was no reason we stopped we just never picked it up again See, yeah, I'm the same boat with Shade. I, I liked it. I didn't get up to eight, I watched about two and I liked it. It's just one of those things again, work I got sidetracked on some other show and because I don't I don't cover it personally, so um, yeah, I'm behind, but I did like I like what I saw. Yeah, the, the there's an episode in season two, I'll just give you the name Jackie, da Jackie Daytona. It is okay. so silly and so good, it's awesome. But Dave, also, I feel like FX has really kind of crushed it lately with comedies with Dave and what we do in the shadows. Um, it, it like they have totally made this unbelievable next step in comedies. It's like kind of high concept, weird. Like you're not gonna laugh a lot in Dave. You're really not. But it's kind of this like weirdly heartfelt comedy because there are like really serious moments. But for some reason, it just really, really works. And it kind of plays off. It has a millennial vibe to it, but it's not. I don't know. It's kind of hard to, to describe. Other than he's trying to be. He thinks he's the next Kanye West, but he's he's just a little dicky. But he's also like a pretty good rapper. No, okay. he met him at even he like met him at LAX and didn't stop telling me about it. He's been obsessed with him for years. Like really? years. he's loved Lil Dicky yeah. forever. Um, but I actually have heard that that show's really good. Yeah, I said it's really funny. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Uh, Umbrella Academy. I'm I'm lost. I don't think I like it anymore. I think I'm out. David, tell yeah, me. Yeah, I I again I didn't have to cover it. Laura, who's uh, another over at IGN, Prudem, she reviewed it for us, covered most of it. I didn't have to cover it. So again, if I don't have to cover something, sometimes I'll you know, move on to something else. And I watched a couple episodes of season one. I enjoyed it. I thought it was unique. I liked the cast, yeah. um, but it didn't. It wasn't something that hooked me. But I know like the fans of the show absolutely just adore it. I know like they're very passionate. It just didn't hook me right away, but I, I need to give it, I, it's not fair. I didn't give it enough episodes um, to really get into it, but it's one of those things where I just, I don't know. Never Sinead, caught up with that feeling that David is turning into a TV elitist. Are we getting into this? This, like, I only watched one episode. Psh, I, I don't cover it, so I don't have to watch this. You know, you know what's weird is it's, it's not even follow the rule anymore. The rule was always three episodes. I know not it's good for the rule. But I'm watching so much more than I used to, and I, the volume I have to watch and check out and preview. I know I'm complaining. I know it's like, what was me? Uh, where, where's the little violin? Um, uh, but yeah, it's just, I, I can't watch everything. There's too much. It's too much. It's too yeah, much. No, it is. I agree with you though. I understand that. Like, I do think it's a lot. And like I said, especially like when you're at home or, I mean, like now obviously we can go out again, but in the beginning, I, I can't imagine because it 
to watching TV felt really different, you know, in mm -hmm. this past spring and beginning of summer because it was like, there's no break from it. You know? and, I, and because of that, I'm watching, I think just because I need a break from all the serious dramas out there, you know, all these right. drama shows out there. So like Michelle and I, but she's a little more into reality TV than I am. We like, you know, we've been selling Sunset. There's a new <laughs> house, there's a new one called Million Dollar Beach House, which is like selling Sunset, but with less plastic surgery and it's in the Hamptons instead. Pretty interesting. And then we've been, uh, there's this new show coming out called Deaf You, which is like about this deaf, mostly deaf college. Like I think it's a private school outside of DC. And it's about these kids that are deaf and there's different class systems of being deaf and different ways of being deaf what? and different. It's all, it's crazy. It's, I think the trailer's out for it. It's coming out later this year on Netflix. Whoa. And it's really okay. good. I've only seen a few so episodes. Actually, I don't know if I'm going to say it was good, but I, you know, I, I've seen some episodes of that. So I would look for that coming out. It's a really interesting subject matter. Um, um, that I'm excited to watch more of. In that docu series uh, um, situation, I love this season of Last Chance. You, I've watched every season. Just fantastic, so this good. So good. Did you watch Home Game? Home Game was about like hometown sports around the around no. the world. It's pretty interesting. There's one in Florence where they literally just run with a ball and you get punched in the face. It look, it's like the most. <laughs> oh, I, I did see something of. I did see. You're right. I saw something. Yeah. Like, um, we just we watched Love on the Spectrum. Uh, which yeah, about, I watched that. But yeah, yeah. Unbelievably touching and heartfelt. I loved that. Um, we got a super chat here from Steve, the movie guy, who said, good to see you guys. Any thoughts on Ted Lasso from Apple TV Plus? The show is so kind of hard. It's much needed in this difficult times. David, have you watched this? Again, Apple TV Plus, I've been in and out of. I saw the morning show. I've seen at least one episode of almost every show, except for the, the Ted Lasso one that he's talking about. Apple TV Plus hasn't... Um, it's not something a lot of people talk about. Apple TV Plus isn't really trending anywhere. It's just like one of those things like, hey, if you have an extra five bucks or you bought an Apple device in the last year, you have it for free for a year. People are checking it out. But because there's so many streaming services out there, I don't think people have quite flocked to Apple TV Plus. So it's not something that I focus a lot of my attention on. Yeah. But if you have the five bucks a month to spare or you bought a new Apple product and you get a year free, um, I, I think it's worth watching some of those shows. For I sure. feel like I got suckered into Disney Plus just for The Mandalorian, and that's the only thing I've watched on it. I mean, I'm guessing, you know, kids love the Disney Plus, so it's, like, useful for parents and everything. Uh, Apple TV Plus, we downloaded for, like, two weeks. It was, like, that two-week trial. We watched three episodes of The Morning Show. Couldn't really get into it. What? Um, it gets good. It gets, it, you got to stick with it. Insane. That's really? one of the craziest things you've ever said in your life. Josh, I swear to God. You have missed out on one of the greatest TV shows ever. Like you need wow. to, you absolutely need to watch it. Okay, all right. It's not well. like don't go into it expecting your life to be changed, but expect, it's super soapy. But expect to be highly entertained. Like yeah. especially you and Amanda, it is so entertaining. Like just it is, it's so good. You have to watch yeah. it. Okay, so, all right. And then I watched so that defending Jacob show, which was trash. Okay. <laughs> Yes, but, yeah, I, I reviewed that defending Jacob. Yeah, I reviewed that one. Sinead just yelled at me. I feel like just because, like, like, you know, you know how you're like, Sinead, I know you would like this show. Yeah, like, it's not gonna like it's not gonna blow your mind out of the water, but you you will be highly entertained. You will talk about it after you've watched some of those episodes, and the acting is really good. Like, it's yeah. really good. And um, Steve Carl's great in it for some, yeah, he kind of annoys me sometimes. And I was not annoyed by him not one single time. I think he was so good in the morning show, like one of the best casts for a TV show in a while. Like he's, it's just really good. You gotta watch it. I mean, I, I, Steve Carl. I tried to watch Space Force. Really could not get into it. I watched like four and a half episodes and was just. I just really want to know what happened to Lisa Kudrow, and we still didn't figure that out yet. So I, you know, I, I, I couldn't really get on to Space Force. But okay, now that you've yelled at me, I will go back and I will watch the morning show. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Oh, but docu series, real quick. Um, uh, Chef's Table is coming out. Chef's Table Barbecue is coming out in like a, a week, I think, or a week and a half. Whole, I mean, that that gets me excited because you know barbecue. Yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else we got in here? Um, oh, can I? I'll talk about the show coming out here yeah. soon. I think I talked about it. When we were playing golf the other day. <laughs> yeah, you um, did. Gangs of London. So my UK brothers and sisters out there have probably already said like, oh, that's saw that. That's an old show. But in the US, it's not coming out until October, I believe. It's going to be on AMC. So Gangs of London is from Garth Evans. And Garth Evans is a creator of the Raid movies. So 
you know, incredible martial arts, you know, fight choreography, all that. So imagine like, you know, Peaky Blinders in modern times, because you even have, I think his name's Joe Cole, the young red haired kid. Yeah. Um, uh, he's playing the lead gangster uh, in this one, but they bring some of that, not as crazy martial arts, but close, more boxing style um, into uh, this show. So you basically get a Godfather type show, you know, the son, the Joe Cole's the son of a renowned gangster, comes into power, has to deal with all that pressure, kind of like a Michael Corleone character, and then mix in the crazy action from the raid. It's wow. awesome. I've only seen five episodes. Uh, Michelle Fairley from Game of Thrones is also in it. It's, you know, the who's who of, you know, UK, you know, uh, actors, character actors that you've seen. It's it's really cool show. I yes. dig it. UK people in the chat that are either agreeing with you or saying, I've only seen five. I haven't watched the whole season, so well, I'm they're saying the action scenes are great, storyline is meh, but I'm also seeing a lot of stuff in between. Okay. Uh, I'm that that gets me excited. I mean, yeah. it, when, where is this coming out? Uh, AMC in the states. Oh shit! I mean, I'll, I should hype it up too. It's not like a perfect show. It's not like the best show I've seen in years, but I think it's just a really cool show. Yeah, the storyline is kind of what we've seen it before, but the action, the way it's filmed. It's, it has a cool look. It's just really cool. It's a slick show. Okay. Really slick. Yeah. Well, one of the guilty pleasures I've watched during quarantine and just started is called The Kingdom. It's about UFC fighting in Venice. In like, not Venice, Italy, like in Venice, California. Yes. It's about a gym. What's his name from the Marvel? He was in Captain America yeah. movie. Frank Grillo is the lead. Um, the uh, Nick Jonas is in it. Really? Um, yeah. The one, the Jonas brother. What's and then. Married to? I always forget which ones they're married to. Uh, he's the Priyanka Chopra. Ah, that's it. Shanaf, you got it. Um, <laughs> it's 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 weird. The first season is ten episodes. The second season is twenty episodes, and then the third season, I'm only like eight episodes into it. And I think it ends after forty eight episodes. So I think I'm pretty close to being done. Um, I was about weird. Remember, Josh? We talked about like Mr. Mercedes, and remember, yeah. was that one show called Diamonds or? Bling, what I remember was about like the Diamond District in LA. We watched it for a season. Oh, cut those ATT direct TV shows. Yeah, I watched uh, Louder Milk, that was an 88 audience show. Yeah, audience, that's yeah. it, audience. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Um, but yeah. I watched, I've been watching this Kingdom show now. I'm too invested, I gotta see how this ends, and I think I know how it's gonna end, but I still kind of need to watch it. Also, there are a ton of boobs in this show, like it is, there's so much nudity in this show, it's insane. Like Amanda's walked in a couple times and been like, what are you watching porn? I'm like, no, it's Kingdom. There's like, <laughs> it's a legit show. <laughs> no, it's quite entertaining. Um, but I, you know, I, Sinead, I'm not going to yell at you that you need to watch the show. I'm just telling you that's my. It's been my guilty pleasure. All right. David, do you have something on here called Raised by Wolves? Yeah, so I'm really excited about this. This is a series coming out to HBO Max. I believe again early September. And it's from Ridley Scott, you know, director of Alien, Gladiator, The Martian, all that kind of stuff. Hey, oh, Josh, it also stars um, Travis Fimmel from Vikings, you know, Ragnar oh, Lothbrok himself. Yes. This is, is going to be his big new show. And it's about these androids who are on a – you can go watch the trailer uh, on now. And it's got the androids on a distant planet, and they're raising these human kids. And it looks really interesting, like kind of crazy, big sci-fi space opera world building. And the special effects, at least from the trailer, look awesome. So I'm really excited. That's going to be on HBO Max, of course. If you're, I know the whole HBO Max thing is ridiculously confusing, but of yeah. course, if you're an HBO subscriber, you should have access to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it, I'm, I'm checking that one out for sure. I know this isn't a TV thing, but I watched American Pickle on HBO Max a couple of nights ago. How was that? That was the uh, Seth Rogen, right? Seth Rogen, guys. It's an hour and a half, and it is so simple and so funny. Like yeah. it's just. The most simple plot line. It almost feels like they wrote one movie and then, then figured out what the movie was like halfway through shooting and then like went back and kind of reshot another movie. But it it works. It's just very stupidly entertaining and funny. I highly recommend. Um, yeah, that's 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 I, that's the only thing I've watched on HBO Max so far. What else? What else is on HBO Max? That, uh, Sinead, I, I don't know if you've seen Love Life with. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like Love Life. It's cute. It's an anthology series. It's cute. Oh yeah, Love Life's the one with the uh, 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 Anna uh, from Up in the Air. Yeah, Anna Kendrick. Yeah, Anna Kendrick. That's it, Anna Kendrick. Yep. I haven't watched it. <laughs> it's worth checking out. It, it, it's a self-contained. I think it's like eight to ten episodes, and her story wraps up, and then they're going to do a season two, and then 
they're going to do a whole new cast. It's like each season is going to be a different person's love life. It's cute. Right I mean, if you, you know, it's a cute show. Oh. Right on. Right on. Uh, Sinead, do you got anything you want to, you want to, before we take off here, you want to, you want to yeah. lay it down? Uh, well, I watched, I watched Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix too. Honestly, like, I don't think it can touch the first one. I think the first one was just like, so creepy. Kind of, I, just so good. It was so creepy. I used to get genuinely really scared watching the first season. I don't think I felt scared at all watching this. I mean, I know I was a lot younger when I watched the first one, but I just, I, regardless of that, I've seen a lot of people like hate on it because it can't touch the first one. But I think that just to have the opportunity for like people to get involved in unsolved uh, missing persons cases and unsolved murders and things like that is so exciting. And if you think about the first reader or the first, um, the first run of unsolved mysteries by that show being on the air and the public getting involved and getting information like directly to people all over, they ended up solving like, close to 250 something cases or something like that. And it's so, for me, I feel like it's so exciting. I obviously I'm going through this phase of my life where I am just completely obsessed with true crime right now. So it makes That's sense. True crime podcast or? Yeah, like I've listened to them all. I, every single day I'm like, somebody needs to give me a new podcast because I just, that's all I do is just listen to them all. But I just, I don't know, Unsolved Mysteries, give it a chance if you haven't seen it. Um, I dug it. Yeah, I, I really liked it too. I just feel yeah. like it obviously can't touch the first round, but like watch all the episodes because at the end of the day, all these stories deserve to be heard, every single one. And this is the type of thing that you never think like um, families don't think that these things can be solved and all you need is the right pair of eyes on it or the right pair of ears listening and you never know. So I just encourage people to watch it, your friends, whatever, because you never know what kind of information you have. And they'll be like, if you were on vacation in Myrtle Beach on like December, you know, it's just like, there's so, it's so interesting to me how things can kind of tie up together. And like, just the, we actually live in a very small world where people don't realize that they hold vital information to solving a case that's like mm -hmm. 30, 40 years old. So just watch it. Just right just yeah, I liked it. Amanda liked it. We like true crime. I, I, I concur, Sinead, I concur. What else you got? Me? Yeah. Um, well, I watched Selling Sunset. I binged it all in one night. Yeah. <laughs> I love that show. Drama. Um, also, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Denise Richards' lesbian scandal. It's so good, you guys. Not that, not because like she's doing lesbian things, like that's fine, but because she's married <laughs> and doing lesbian things. Oh, fine. snap. <laughs> yeah. So um, I highly suggest watching that. Even if yeah. you've watched Real Housewives before ever. It is so hard not to be so invested in Denise Richards' storyline this season just because Denise Richards is Denise Richards and she's iconic. And just watch it. Do yourself yeah. a favor. Watch it. It's so good. Um, uh, Jonathan Peck says, close enough on HBO Max. It's fantastic and really funny. David, any thoughts on John on Jonathan Peck's close enough? I have not seen it. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> For some reason, my Roku won't let me download an HBO Max. No, so this is the thing. So Roku, both Roku and I believe Peacock right now, they're still ironing out their deals with Roku and Amazon Fire Stick. So you can't, you, it, it's really annoying. Like these billion dollar companies release the streaming service and they don't even, they can't, you can't even watch on a Roku. Like a ton of people watch stuff on Rokus and Fire Sticks. It's really annoying. Yeah. yeah they, they should have that ironed out. Yeah. Holy moly. Because uh, I was like, oh, I'll watch anything. Else. Nope, Roku doesn't nope. even have it. And my other smart TV in the bedroom is like kind of a jerk. Like it won't. Yeah. Me, it doesn't have any more room for apps. It's kind of old anyway. Regardless, I watch HBO Max on my PlayStation Four. It's yeah, it's like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, it's not like a real big problem, but you know, it's still annoying. <laughs> uh, guys, that's a TV talk here on a Thursday. Uh, I want to thank Sinead and David for taking the time to hang out. I miss you guys. I miss seeing people in person. Um, I think, Sinead, maybe the first time I'll see you is maybe in November at the Griff. I know. At the, at the Griffin wedding. Holy moly. Fingers Thank crossed. You. Like, hopefully. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I'm excited, though, to see you guys. It'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, before we get out of here, Sinead, where can the good people find you? Um, I am on the internet at Sinead DeVries. Um, I'm on Clever Style all the time, multiple yeah. times. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's it. No more that's just so Sinead.com. Uh, I mean, it's up there somewhere. You can find it. 
<laughs> You're the best. David Griffin, let us know. Uh, you can find me on the internet at Griffin D E. And today I am going to be on the NG Plus show on IGN. You can find it on the website, of course, IGN.com or on YouTube. It's going to be at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I don't know exactly what we're going to be talking about yet. I don't know. I saw some news just break recently. It looks like uh, Ben Affleck's going to be in the Flash movie. He's going to make an appearance. Oh, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on with the whole DC fandom thing this weekend. So I'm sure we'll talk on that, some gaming news. And uh, yeah, so check me out there. Bang, bang. I should probably do a. Pick of the week. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick that love on the spectrum. I highly recommend. It's very heartfelt, kind of a lovely show. Uh, it really does put a positive spin on just about anything you're watching out there. And, and I will do a not pick of the week. Uh, Lost Resort on TBS. I tried to watch about 10 minutes of that. and It might be the worst show on TV. So there's your pick. And I've never done a not pick of the week. I don't usually like to go to negative, but, you know. I like I it. Feel like that show should get squashed. That's so funny. Uh, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga Twitter and Instagram, uh, the Josh McCuga show on YouTube. But you know, maybe we'll do this again in a month or so. I know Sinead and David are both busy, but if we're still stuck and we we still can do this, uh, we'd love to be back here doing it with you guys. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote.